So welcome back. Uh, it's been a great time up here in the mountains. We've uh, been able to get out on the trail. It's been a little on the chilly side, especially up at the higher elevations. You hit about, uh, let's see, probably about 8,500 feet and you get snow, you hit 9,000 feet and you get uh, essentially almost blizzard type conditions. So it's been a little on the chilly side, but it's been great. We've had uh, a beautiful time up here. It has not been crowded at all. We've had the trails essentially to ourselves and the views have been fantastic. Uh, we got out, uh, drove past some lakes, um, drove past some beautiful lakes. It got to have snow. Granted, it was like 25 degrees and um, 15 mile per hour winds when we ate lunch. Uh, so we did not spend a lot of extra time at the lake, but uh, it was nice. Um, got out, did some fun trails, uh, a lot of fun. It's a beautiful area. This is Cook City, Montana. There are a lot of trails in this area that get you up high above the tree line where you can see uh, incredible views of this area of the Rocky Mountains. So if you ever get an opportunity to get out here, it's it's awesome. I'll drop some, uh, we'll drop some pictures and you can get, take a look at it. But getting back to where we were with accounting. So we talk, talked through a lot of the, what I would say, single sum problems. So now we're gonna move on to our annuity problem. Well, annuities are not single sum. They're a series of cash flow problems. This is actually probably the more common situations that you're going to find in accounting where, okay, we need to figure out the present value of a series of cash flows. Okay. So if I want to make an investment and this investment is going to provide me say uh, $10,000 every year for the next five years, well, what's that worth to me today? Well, that's an annuity. So what is an annuity? Well, an annuity is a pe <laughs> periodic payment of receipts. These are called rents. Typically they have to be of the same amount. If they're not of the same amount, you have to calculate the present value of each one separately. An annuity allows you to calculate them once if they're all the same. They also all have to fall in the same interval of time. So ten, again, going back to our my illustration I just had, it's the $10,000 that we're receiving every year for the next, say, five to 10 years. It's $10,000, it's a fixed sum, and it's received every year. Now, if it was gonna be $10,000 this year, 12,000 next year, 15 the next year, okay, that's not the same amount and we would need to discount back each one of those as their own single sum if we wanted to try to calculate the present value. So this probably the most classic example and the one we'll actually be working through a lot of in class or in the examples I'm running through in this video is uh, bonds. So notes and bonds, basically when you're borrowing money at some fixed rate, there is going to be a very fixed series of cash flows associated with the bonds. And that's what we're going to calculate like what's the present value or say what's the future value of that series of cash flows. And that helps us determine what's the value of the bond today. So what's it need to go on the, our books for today from an accounting standpoint. So um, the interest also has to be computed. It compounds once each interval. So if it's say, if your com, if your sorry, if your interval is one year, interest has to compound once a year. If it doesn't, annuity doesn't work. You, again, you have to, or it, the calculations, the simple calculations we're doing don't work that way. It's a much more complex calculation, but the concept is the same. And the concept is what the, the most critical part of getting this, being able to work them just demonstrates that you understand the concept well enough to work a basic problem. So there are two types of annuities. There's an ordinary annuity where rents occur at the end of each period. So the idea is like, if I borrow money today, my first payment is going to occur at the end of the first period. That's an ordinary annuity. Alternatively, it could be an annuity due in which our, the rents occur at the beginning. So let's say if we you wanted to calculate, uh, going back to our single sum problem, uh, let's say that the, the was it the $20,000 uh, that you were going to get for college. Well, maybe you weren't going to get at the end of the first year. Maybe you're going to get that at the beginning of the first year. So that's a, that would be an annuity due because the rents start occurring at the beginning of the periods instead of at the end of the first period. So the difference there is just for an annuity due, if you're calculating the present value, you basically, you, um, discount it by one year of everything by one year of interest because um, the present value of a dollar that you're receiving today is $1. There's nothing to extend. And if you're calculating the future value, well, then you multiply everything by one, one basically the interest for one period. So you multiply it, say if the interest rate was 6%, you'd multiply it times 1.06. And it just gives you, because you're earning one extra year of interest on everything. So that's the annuity due 
issue. We'll talk about that a little bit. I'm less concerned really with an annuity due. It's, it's important to know it's out there, but from a conceptual understanding how time value works and how different things are calculated, the annuity due is just a, uh, a sp special case of everything else. So I'm far less worried about you being able to calculate uh, a special case. I'm more interested in that you understand what's going on. What is an annuity? When do we apply annuities? and roughly how do we calculate them. So start out with value, figuring out the future value of an ordinary annuity. So again, ordinary annuity, um, the rents occur at the end of the start at the end of the first period. So if it's $20,000, um, we have the present value of this uh, is something. It's what's the present value of receiving say $20,000 for we'll say the next eight years. Um, the future value is well, what's the future value of receiving $20,000 um, for basically the last eight years, uh, receiving $20,000 a year for the last eight years. So that is our uh, basic setup of an ordinary annuity. So how this relates to um, our single sum problems. We saw this when we worked through the $20,000 college uh, payment example. All we're doing with an annuity is taking each one of those and putting them all together and calculating it once instead of having to calculate, okay, well, what's the present value of the first series, the first cash flow? What's the present value of the second cash flow? What's the present value of the third and fourth cash flow all separately? An annuity does it all once. So that's the simplicity of the annuity. That's why we use annuities instead of having to do it individually. So the single sum you'd have to do say five times for a five-year um, annual annuity, 10 times if you're doing a 10-year annuity, whatever, right? So this basically simplifies things, especially when we start getting to bonds we're, 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 when we're talking about five to 10 years, let's say they, they um, compound and pay out quarterly. So then a five-year bond quarterly, you're talking about 60 separate cash flows that you can calculate with one calculation using an annuity, or you can calculate with 60 if you're doing single sums. So a quick illustration. So figure out what's the, the future value of $5,000 deposits made at the end of each of the next five years. Okay, let's say I'm getting out, I'm gonna save for a new car. So I'm gonna to try to save $5,000 every year for the next five years. How much can I expect to have at the end of that five years, assuming a 6% interest rate? basically how much will I have to pay to buy a new car? So let's start out. So at present value right now, I have no money. I'm going to be working for the next year. I'm going to put $5,000 away and then I'm going to work for the second year and put $5,000 away. So it's a $5,000 annuity for five years at 6%. And we are trying to calculate what is the future value of this annuity. So there are tables that we're going to use. Again, I'm going to use the tables when I work through examples and what I'll put up as the slides here, I'm working through the tables because it lays out all the factors. Again, you're most likely gonna try to use your financial calculator, which I encourage you to do. You're more likely to have that available to you than a table, but make sure you know how your financial calculator works. So recalculate some problems and make sure that you're not just walking in cold and trying to learn your financial calculator uh, when you get to a problem that actually, when a situation where it actually starts to matter that you have the right number. So with that said, so here's our table. So we're going to be 6%, the number of periods for five periods. Um, our factor is going to be, so we take five, um, five periods. Our factor is going to be 5.63. So five periods, it's got to be at least five because we're receiving this five times plus whatever the interest rate is. So our factor is 5.63. So our deposits are $5,000. Our factor is 5.63709 and gives us our, a future value of $28,185. So that's how much money in my car, the, the quick car example here, at the end of five years, I will have $28,185 that I can take to use to go buy a car. And that's saving $5,000 at the end of every year for the next five years. So that is calculating the future value of that <clears throat> um, of an ordinary annuity. If we wanted to move on to an annuity due, so an ordinary annuity is your is the rents start at the end of the first period. An annuity due, the rents start at the beginning of the first period. So that is the only difference. Now, if we're trying to calculate a future value, uh, which is what we've worked through, if we're trying to calculate a future value, then <clears throat> All, essentially all this is is an ordinary annuity that we're just going to multiply times one plus the interest rate because we're moving everything if the future value 
<clears throat> it started to grow one period sooner. So everything is growing one more period. Well, it's pretty straightforward. Whatever the fi figure is for an ordinary annuity, multiply it times one plus the interest rate. And that gives you the annuity due for future values. So uh, let's, let's do a quick example, future value of an annuity due. So if we wanted to calculate, we say $800 uh, for the next eight years, uh, we're going to use 6% interest rate compounding annually, which just simplifies things greatly. So um, to work that example, we would figure out, okay, well, what's the ordinary annuity? If the ordinary annuity amount, so if the future value of the ordinary annuity of $800 um, for eight years. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the factor that we would have for an ordinary annuity, which would be 9.89. We're just going to multiply that times 1.06. Again, we're just taking the amount, the what it would be for ordinary annuity times 1.06 because it's the it's a um, the future value. That gives us a factor of 10.49. Multiply that times our $800, which is the amount of the annuity, which gives us $8,393. So that's how much we'll have accumulated over those eight years at $800 per year, assuming we're going to start the payments today. So today's our first payment. And then we're going to pay beginning of every period for the next eight periods. And then what is it at the very end of those, uh, very end of the eighth year? In this case, it would be $8,393. And that is going to be more than it would be if we didn't start paying until the end of the first period. So if we want to do present value of a, a <clears throat> present value of an ordinary annuity. So we just did a bunch of future value problems. Now we're going to do present value problems. So our present value problems, this we're discounting everything back. So what is it worth today? So if from a business decision, you're trying to figure out, okay, well, if I, let's say I want to buy a new business or buy a new um, piece of machinery, and I expect that that machinery is going to earn me money for the next 10 years or something. How, and what's, if that machine is going to earn me $5,000 a year for the next 10 years, well, what's it worth to me today? What is, what would it, at what cost would that machine make sense? Um, assuming I wanted to make some rate of return that helps me make that decision. Do I buy this piece of machinery or not? This would be present value of an annuity. Again, all we're trying to do, this is just our, our, our <clears throat> fixed sums, all discounting back separately just like what we did for when we're doing future value. This is present value. We're just bringing everything back instead of taking um, each individual uh, <clears throat> each, each individual amount forward. So quick illustration. So let's say you win the state lottery and you have the option of taking $2 million today or $100,000 paid at the end of each period for the next 20 years. So this is typical for those of you who don't know, this is typically how lotteries work. They give you a uh, the number you see. So it's a $100 million lottery or something. That's the sum of all the future cash flows. Well, that's not actually what they're worth because it assumes some interest rate, they're going to be worth less than that, but that is how they um, advertise it. So, and a lot of times if you won the lottery, you would get this choice. You could take some amount today, lump sum amount today, or you could take um, it paid out over, say, the next 20 years. So in this case, it's $2 million. It's going to be paid out as $100,000 payments at the end of each year for the next 20 years. Um, how much has this person actually won? Like, what's the actual amount? Let's assume an 8% discount rate. So I can guarantee you it's less than the $2 million because you're discounting that sum back. All they're doing is summing up the $100,000 for 20 years is $2 million. That's not the present value of this. So if we wanted the present value of this, using our table, we had another period. The number of period is 20 years. It's at 8%. So we're going to figure out it's going to be a factor of 9.818 is our factor. So we're going to multiply that times our $100,000. So if we take our $100,000, our factor is 9.818. So that $2 million sum of the payments is actually only worth $981,000 today at assuming 8%. One, another way of thinking of that, you would get the, you'd have the same amount of money if you took today $981,000 and invested it at 8%. You could take $200,000, you can take $100,000 out at the end of every period for the next 20 years. 
um, and you'd end up with zero dollars at the end of that period, just like you would end up with no future payments if you took the hundred thousand dollars. That is another way of phrasing what's happening here. So that two million dollar stated value lottery in the present value discounted back twenty for twenty years at eight percent is actually only worth nine hundred eighty one thousand dollars. So. If we did the ordinary, if we did an annuity due, it's the same idea, but now the idea is, okay, if we're trying to figure out the present value, we start with receiving money today. Well, that's one less year that's getting discounted. So um, because of that, we're going to take our factor. Um, and again, we're going to multiply our factor times <laughs> the one plus the rate. So if we took uh, this example where <clears throat> we have a company rents a communication satellite for four years with an annual rental payment of say $4.8 million, satellites are expensive, to be made at the beginning of each year. If the relevant interest rate is 5%, what's the present value? So the present value of this <clears throat> would be, the present value factor of this would be uh, 3.5 roughly if it was an ordinary annuity, but if it's an annuity due, it's going to actually be 3.7 because we're multiplying 3.5 times 1.05 to get us 3.7. That's our new factor. We're now gonna multiply that times the payments, which um, gives us, just for this calculation, gives us uh, $17,871,000. That is the present value of these of these series of cash flows with the first one occurring right now because it's an annuity due. An ordinary annuity, the first one wouldn't occur until the end of the period. So <clears throat> with that, I'm going to take a quick break. And then we're going to, when we come back, we're going to talk about the how we value bonds, which is a very practical accounting example. We use it in, in I would say, somewhat basic accounting all the time. So with that, have a great day. God bless. So there's your grizzly bear claw. It's a small grizzly bear because there's a 12 shoe. And this is from this morning because, because it snowed last night. So we just ran into grizzly bear tracks right up the trail here. Um, we're gonna break out the bear spray and keep it handy from here on out. So uh, they do require hard side campers here. And this is why. But not hard side 